I'd seen the Atlantic Ocean, and I just figured in my lifetime I would never see the Pacific Ocean. And we were going to Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood, California. Somebody said, I heard you was going to Hollywood, Florida. <laughs> no, Hollywood, California. Is there Hollywood, Florida? I guess. And of course, they call him the clogging man. They got such a nice little love story. You know, they're just so devoted to each other. They're the, the Reagans here. When the real estate together, we clog together, we cook together. We're just made for each other. That's right. We was, wasn't we? We are. Take it up one straight line. And take a bell, ladies and gentlemen. That is the Cracker Jack Clockers. She's taught me just a whole lot about cooking. And, you know, and there's tricks and things. If you're going to enter a cooking contest, you need to know. She has been twice. Pillsbury Bake Off. I've, I've already been once. This will be my second time. Oh, you talk about competitive. It's really competitive. You get my alligator. She's the boss. Yeah. <laughs> let your house come off. Well, <laughs> no, she won't. <laughs> so you did real well in the last Bake Off, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, won ten thousand dollars. I saved it, cut it out of paper. Yeah. yeah. Well, now this one was in the paper. Did you say? Do you cut it out? Yeah. yeah. You need to make it too. Yeah, I will. Yeah, it's real good too. I always look on the bright side of everything, and I just feel like it's you know got a real good opportunity to win, and you know you got to feel that way if you're going to be in some kind of contest. Dude, I'm hoping and praying you win that. Well, all right. Well, I appreciate that. That praying will help. I believe you will. The freedom that it would give you that we could not have to worry so much because now it's we've got a lot of things going on and and volatile things though that you can't depend on it seems like he's kind of you know always up in the air every month you don't know if you'll you know even get a house show i've never been a millionaire <laughs> i think i would have all the money i wanted and needed and i wouldn't have to work so hard you know to make money <laughs> because it's easier to do. You can actually take a piece of crushed or dough or make a dough out of biscuits or anything or just about anything you want to in there, put some cheese and steak on it, you know, whatever. You've got some kind of dish. may not be fit to eat, but you, you know, once in a while you come up with one. Go ahead and finish it off. When she won her first contest, like in the Richmond Register had one, and it was a Mexican wedding cake that she made. Well, she won. And she ended up loving the one and built a bit of burger. Paul Newman, beef cook, I and mean, she's been in all those. I have my streak. It seems like it comes that way. But she started winning, and I said, well, you can do it, I can do it too. And the only fella to make it, Richard McCarg of Richmond, Kentucky, for his Tex Mex appetizer cart. Congratulations to all of our semifinalists. When I heard my name, I took off, and I know I stopped on people. Coming, comes uh, ahead of me, kind of sitting in the middle, and I mean, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> I, I just thought I was just going to fall through the floor. Mount Sapuri, Kentucky, chicken. And I don't know what I would have done if I won. I really don't. I may have just got out and kicked my feet right up in there. And, yeah, I've got a bunch of heel yeah. clicks on. I expect to get in there and cook and hope to win. I mean, I'm not going to say that I'm going to win, but if my recipe is good enough, then I'll come in somewhere. And I think it is. That's a prize winner right there. <laughs> $25,000 first prize. This $25,000 grand prize winner is $70,000 in cash prizes. For the first time in this half hour, one of our 100 finalists will take home the grand prize of $1 million. my great aunt's recipe box. Shrimp ho-ho, here it is. Makes four servings unless M.W. invited to dinner, and then it only serves two. And we have no idea who M.W. is. <laughs> Apparently they liked this recipe. 
I consider the recipes that I have from my grandmothers and other family members to be heirlooms. Some people collect pictures, and I'm more interested in the, the food, you know. <laughs> She's had the exact same hair cut for 26 years. It's an amazing talent, you know, <laughs> to be so, so timeless. I'm fascinated with the history or the nostalgia of the Pillsbury Bake Off. My recipe's not too exotic, and it's something your grandmother would have made. And it's, it's a very homey kind of dessert. And in fact, there was a winning pie from 1949 that's a cashew pie, and it looks exactly like it. And it probably has a similar flavor. And from 1949, it was called Company's Coming Cashew Pie. And I think there's this real sense of going back to that age, you know, the 40s and 50s. The oat, it has oatmeal, and it has walnuts, which are brown, and the chocolate chips you can't see because they're, they sink. Um, and, you know, brown sugar's brown. <laughs> and yeah, granola's brown, too. So really, it's, it's all shades of brown. <laughs> I like to serve it with whipped cream or ice cream because that will allow me to do that for the judges. And I think that'll go a long way for parents to have something else on the plate besides just my brown pie. <laughs> Jack had gotten filthy. filthy and mother cooked with Kate. I was a librarian and it's one of the jobs that you can pick it up and come back to it. It isn't like the corporate ladder where if you take a few years off, you feel like you'll never get back up the ladder. Kate. And that was something I really thought I could still do while I had children. It's actually harder than I ever thought, and I know everyone says that. This is a new shovel. Come here, Jackie. Let's go play with Indigo. I think the mind-numbing sameness day in and day out, which is what children need, I know this, but, you know, I was so used to being, you know, world events and current events and what's going on today. There are days I'm like, I have no idea if it's Thursday. Okay, here we go. And I really, really had fun sitting there with a notebook and thinking, thinking, thinking of things to come up with and try and while the kids watch Barney, you know? I think I was looking for a little excitement. This is uh, Life Flight 3. It's uh, one of uh, four bases. We basically do uh, hospital to hospital transfers of patients, and we also do accident scenes on the highway and, and for farm accidents or anything like that. Well, good. Suzanne's caused fights in here because well, she'll bring in some whatever she brings in, and there's people, especially some of these firemen, they'll sure, look fight for it. I can take Ooh. you to the Good. Very good. Mm -hmm. Put a jalapeno on there, and it'd be really good. <laughs> <laughs> My buddy, Suzanne. Ready to go. Oh, God. <laughs> She likes making people happy with, you know, what she bakes, but she just really doesn't, she doesn't like being in the limelight. Yeah, I'm not a big camera bug, so that, that actually bothers me more than the rest of it, just being on display. And I'll be the, you know, the one drinking the Maalox, you know, or whatever at the event. <laughs>